Hello and welcome to Psych 18. I am Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about dynamic data masking in Microsoft Fabric Data Warehouse. This is really a cool feature which I made a separate video on previously like how you can use row level security and column level security as well as object level security in Microsoft Fabric Data Warehouse. Now you can also control a further level up which is you can customize using data masking. This is actually a useful thing. Let's say, for example, we have an employee information and we also have a pay structure, salary information of each and every employee. And that is only applicable for HRT. And if you want to share that particular table with other user and so that they can get all the other information except the salary. So that we discussed previously about using column level security. The disadvantage of that is if you are going to use the same table, they are not able to use that, access that particular table in Power BI because it contains column level security. So you need to create a separate view and then share that view with that user. So that was the limitations. But now with the help of data masking, actually we can share the same table to the user and they can just see, let's say for example, we have a salary information and that particular user to whom you are going to share that table, they will see only zero as a kind of default value for them. They will even have a control on the role of security, but still the column is visible to them, but the, the value inside to that it will be zero. This is for the salary information. And you want to customize like credit card information and also the email ID, you can also customize using that. So we are going to discuss about that in this video. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notification and also hit the like button before you forget about to do that. Let's get started. All right. So basically as per the documentation, um, we can use the existing table using alter table and alter column option. But as of recording to this video, this option is not yet supported in fabric data warehouse. It is supported in Synapse data warehouse, but not yet in this is not supported in Fabric Data Warehouse. Hopefully, it will support in near future. So, as an example for this one, I created a table here on my Data Warehouse. If you see, I have logged in here as my email ID, which is an adnan at tagedin.com, an admin user, and I also open up to my workspace here, and I also used uh, my Gold Warehouse, and open up here and use the new query, and added a few script here, basically, as a predefined script to create a table. So I created a table here, employee data pay. This contains employee ID, first name, last name, and salary. So here, if you notice, this is in, which is the data type which you are declaring here, which is varkar 50, and this is also varkar 50. And here in integer, but apart from that, we used additional thing here. So integer and null is the common thing, but between two, these two, we need to add one more thing, which is masked with open bracket function equal to default open and close within single quote and then close bracket. So by doing that, you are using a masked function and allowing it to give you the default value for this particular case. I have another example how you can treat with credit card information kind of thing and also with uh, text value. For example, if you see it here, this is the first name, which is also varkar 50 and this has a mask with function equal to and it is giving us here partial open bracket within the single. So the function equal to open single quote and then partial open bracket one comma within double quote and character which is dash here comma two. So what it actually does is basically if you look into this here, the first name column shows only the first and last two characters of the string with dash in the middle. So if there is a kind name like my name is Adnan, so the A it will show and then N it will show and the remaining whatever in between the that it will not show up over there. So that's how it will work. So basically if we consider here, my name here at uh, the end of this one, let's say for example, let me take the pen here. So instead of Adnan, basically A D N A N, they will type it as a dash 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 and then n. So that's how it will work. So that is the function of using partial one comma two. So actually, if you see it here, 
and the last two characters of the string so last two right so we have used the two statement here so basically this will show as a and then dash dead and then last a and it will show up here okay so here is the last name the next column which is used here for the last name mask with open bracket function equal to within single quote default close and open bracket and none so if you are using an integer column this will give you the zero value by default but if you are using a text column which is a varchar it will actually going to show you xxx here if you see it here at the bottom you see the last column shows xxx value here similarly if you have like credit card kind of information we need to use the same function which we used for the first name which is within single quote we need to use partial and then open bracket and then define the value zero this initially it should be zero and then comma and then we need to use xx x dash xx just as a kind of our customized value and then last comma of code what it actually give you the result is the ssn column shows triple x i mean xxx dash xx dash followed by the last four characters of the string so it is just going to show you the last four character and rest everything whatever the text is there it is going to show you as xx itself so that's what it is going to give that result so this is how it will work and let's go back to our example now okay i just used here and then used the insert column temporary to insert the data and being an admin this is how it looks like i am going to use the shift enter here so shift enter we need to use in fabric data warehouse because it is working inside the browser yeah now you see it is giving me employee id first name last name and then salary salary for this two is 7500 and then 5500 now if you need to share this table with other user first of all you need to grant them the permission so for that we need to use a select here grant select on this table dbo.employee data pay to hazel@thygating.com so i'm going to share this table with hazel first and then i can apply also the grant access for this so first of all um, uh, let's have a look into hazel Okay, let me log into Hazel now, and this is now into Hazel login. If you see it on the right side, Hazel at playgating dot com, and I have shared her the lake house. I mean the warehouse. If I click on the one lake data hub from the left menu, I can see this recently shared one gold all warehouse. If I open up here, I need to click on open on the top menu, so it will open up the warehouse directly here. and now if i click on sql queries it will i can write the data here so let me zoom here so this is the table which you are looking for select star from employee data pay if i click on that it is going to give me employee id first name last name and here you see the salary it is giving me zero here so basically we have need to give them first the permission for that basically by default if you use this mask and then share this table with any user this is going to apply to them so that's why it is going to give you the zero result for the user if you want to revoke that permission then you need to give them unmask permission so this is what it is written here grant unmask on dbo.mydata.pay which is schema and table name to the email id of the user if you are going to work with azure active directory then you can use the group name here so i'm just i'm now just unmasking it to that particular user and then run this here in atnanathaken.com i am an admin user here so i am going to use this in my login now if i go back to hazel again and then run the same query i should see the value here yeah it is showing the value here which is you can see the salary is showing me 7500 And five thousand five hundred. And as you can see, I logged in here as Hazel at thegating.com. Now, if I go back again to my login, and then I'll just type a message here: revoke unmask on dbo.employee.pay to Hazel at thegating.com, which is I'm just revoking the unmask permission for this particular user from this table. So I need to execute this, and then I need to go back again. let me finish this one and if i go back again to hazel and then click on run now the salary column should show as zero value yeah absolutely so now you can see salary is showing me as a zero value that's really an amazing thing 
So this is really good feature which is released here as we are mainly focusing in Power BI in Fabric that we need to keep all our security layer at the one position. So let's assume that data warehouse is your the main base layer and if you are going to assign these kind of security at the base layer itself, then wherever you are going to share this data warehouse and or if you are going to use this in Power BI report and if you are going to share that Power BI with other users, everything is going to apply using this base security. So this is really an amazing feature. So you can make use of this feature, but it still it is need to go and uh, but it still it need an update to apply this logic in existing table, but for the new table you can apply right away. So hope you got this information about how you can do this one and what is the use of it. So let's now try it in Power BI. So I had an issue with the existing warehouse because I'm testing multiple things. So it may be something has happened on that temporarily. So to continue on this video, so I just created a new warehouse now and it just contain only this particular table, which is employee data pay. And I can able to see the data here like I shown earlier, which is admin can see all the data with the salary column and Hazel can't able to see the data of the salary column. That's what the situation now. And let's create a new report and have a look here. So I'll click on the new report and I need to look into that table now. Yeah, I can see this table here. So let me just add first name, last name, and also the employee ID at the beginning and the salary column. Just this four column, whatever it is available in the table, I have added here. And now you can see everything is added here. So let me just zoom this here so I can increase the font size globally to 20. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, I can see the data here and let me save this report. So this is employee pay data. And save. So now I need to share this report with Hazel and just want to see how it actually works in her login. So let me share this one and type a name here, Hazel. All right, send. Now, if I log into Hazel account here and let's go to this browse option because I have not shared the workspace, it's just a report here. So shared with me here and now I should see this another report which is not at here. So let me refresh the browser. So this is employee pay data. So let's copy the link from this browser and then let me add it here. Sometimes it will take a bit time, but it will come up here. The same thing has happened previously as well. Yeah, now you can see it is added here, employee pay data. And also I'll open up the report here on the browser. What do you expect now? So now you see I can able to see the data here, sum of salary 7,500 and everything here. And if I open up my warehouse here, and then run this one. I can see the zero value here on this thing, but I can able to see the report which is built by admin, the data here. Okay, and now if I go here, I don't have access to build report, so let's have a look into the model, into the reporting. I don't have access to build the report here, but let's go and use the, have the access. So if I go back to the Arrows here. Uh, I mean the workspace. I need to share this with the user. Okay. Um. So gold arrows and then share here. So she can build reports on the default data set and read all data using SQL. Okay. As well and share here. So right now I'm into Hazel, so let me refresh the browser so that the default uh, data set option is enabled now. Yeah, if I click on reporting, I can see the new report here. So I just click new report. So some features are unavailable because your permission or the workspace role. 
to make this feature available, have an admin change your permission or workspace role. Okay, so let's create a new report here directly. I can click on the create here and the new Power BI report. I can pick up a semantic model, which is Power BI data set. If I click on that, I can see a warehouse here and also I can connect to the data set. So right now this is everything is data set itself. As I can see this icon, because we also clicked on the Power BI data set, which is basically a semantic model. I also need to make use of the renaming of this thing. So this is gold all warehouse too, and then click on auto create or you want to create a blank report. Let's create a blank report itself. I just need to add a table and bring all the columns, employee ID, first name, last name, and salary. Fingers crossed. I can see the data. Hmm. So this dynamic data masking is just applicable from warehouse. It is not at risk to Power BI data set. If you are building a report using a data set, then it is not yet applicable as of recording this video. So let's try a building the report using the warehouse directly. I also have an option here analyze in Excel. If I click on that, so let's see how it actually works. And then open this one. I need to log in here. So this has to be Hazel first. I can see the columns here. If I click on employee ID, first name, last name, and the next thing is the main thing, which is salary. I can see the data here, even in analysis in Excel feature. Because that is also coming from the data set, which is semantic model. So that's why. And I can also see it here on the quick report. Everything is also showing up here. So it means so far, the dynamic data masking is just applicable at the warehouse level, not at the data set level. So now let's try directly connecting into the warehouse from Power BI Desktop on Hazel's login. So one like data hub here and then warehouse also here. So gold all warehouse too, and then click on connect to SQL endpoint or warehouse. So let's connect to this directly. So there is no option to select the table. Hmm, okay. So now I can click on employee ID, first name, last name, and the salary. This should now convert into a table. And what is the result here? At the bottom, you can see it is asking, I mean, it is showing us connected live to Power BI data set, gold all warehouse to in master class one. So this is actually connecting to the data set. So now let's close this one because data set we have just seen also in Power BI service, it is actually not working as we expected. So let's create a new file again. Now this time we will select we will select to the SQL endpoint, not to the Power BI data set. So go into one leg data hub and then click on warehouses. And then selecting this warehouse and here at the bottom you need to select connect that is data set here and this is basically where I'm going to connect to this SQL endpoint. It has opened up a new window. I need to give the credentials. Okay. So let's close this window. It is still establishing a connection to the warehouse. Yeah, now I can see this in the pop up, the new data. Amazing. Now, even on the preview, I can see the salary column is zero. So, connecting to SQL endpoint, this works. Dynamic data masking, it is not being supported into Power BI data set, I mean, semantic model. So table is added here and let's add a new table and then employee ID, first name, last name and salary. 
amazing. Now I can able to see only this as a zero. That's great. Now, what if I share this with Adnan? Okay, that's the final thing. So let's save this one. And then publish into Hazel workspace itself. And from there, I can share with Adnan. So what do you think? It should work, right? Adnan should see, should see all the data. Right now, this is import mode, and that's why it will not work. If it is a direct query, then it should work. That's what I can see now. Let me quickly create another same report with direct query mode. And now you see at the bottom, we got storage mode direct query here and also the sum of salary equal to zero. So let me save this as Hazel2 and then share this with Adnan user. Hazel2 and then direct query. Publishing it here to this workspace. Got it. So let's go to this Power BI service quickly and then go to Hazel workspace and just share these two reports. So one is Hazel 1 and Hazel direct query. So let me share only the report, not the data set. And let's see how it goes. Sharing this report here to Adnan. Take it in dot com and then send. And then I need to share this direct query as well. Got it. Now let's go to Adnan login here and let me go to any workspace now. I mean, I had to go to browse here because I don't have access to that workspace. So this is, I'm into browse section and here shared with me. I had to see this Hazel 1 and Hazel Direct 2. Yeah, I can see Hazel 1 and Direct 2. So if I click on Hazel 1 and Hazel 2. So first of all, this is I uh, think Hazel one, which is import mode. Yeah, this is Hazel one and import mode, and the result is zero, obviously because that's an import mode. It is refreshed in it is refreshed in Hazel login, so it is zero showing up there. That's perfectly fine. And now Hazel to direct query. This data source gold arrow is missing credentials and cannot be accessed. Hmm, strange. Okay, this is Hazel's permission. So let's go to Hazel's login again and then go to this data set settings of this, I mean, semantic model settings. I need to recall myself. Yeah, fail to create credential. Please try, try working. Okay. So I can click on edit credentials here. Port viewers can only access this data source with their own Power BI identities using direct query. This is an important thing because if I don't select this option, then this will go through Hazel's login and I can see only zero value. So here I need to click on this option. Report viewers can only access this data source with their own Power BI identity using direct query. I need to select OR2 actually. All right, this is set now and let's open this report in Hazel first. Direct query one. We'll see the result here and then we'll go to Adnan login. I know this video got a little bit lengthy, so please bear with me. Okay, now let's refresh this browser. Amazing. So you need to connect through SQL endpoints in order to work on this functionality, not through Power BI dataset as of regarding this video. Maybe it will come up in future. Yeah, so that's the point here to note. So thank you so much for being with me for this long period. If you are watching this at this stage, I really appreciate your time, giving me time to watch about this functionality. 
So we really clearly understand now is about we can make use of this dynamic data masking of SQL data warehouse in using SQL endpoints, not through this default data set. So it is not applicable as of recording this video. If you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notification. If you have any queries and feedback, just please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.